Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizen Night, as well as our work agenda, or I should say, regular council meeting. Right now, if everybody would kindly rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Before we proceed on any further, if you have a cell phone, please either mute it or turn it off if you would, please. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mayor Greesock. <laughs> Mrs. Gatos. Here. Mr. Poach. Here. Mr. Harvey. Here. Mr. Wolfram. Mr. Osinko. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Mr. Little. Here. Ms. Rock. <coughs> Mr. Hugis. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, just so you know, the mayor had a last minute change on his schedule, and that's why I'm sitting in as a deputy mayor, so. Does that account for the, the thunder we just heard? Yes. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I thought it would be. That's, that's what I thought it was, Mr. Sedlak. Take it easy over there, I'll sir. I'll try. <laughs> Right now, if we're going to go to our public uh, hearing item, it's on the approval of financing for Monroeville Volunteer Fire Company number four. Mr. Ratcher, if you would. Okay, this is the uh, advertised time and place for the hearing for the approval of financing of Monroeville Volunteer Fire Company number four. Um, let me give a little background here. Uh, the Internal Revenue Service permits banks that lend money to volunteer fire companies to um, declare the interest income from the loan tax, um, tax exempt. As a result of that, they can offer the volunteer fire companies a lower rate of interest. Um, the municipality that the volunteer fire company serves has to get the permission of the municipality in order to participate in this program. However, there's no obligation on the part of the municipality or the taxpayers. This is strictly an obligation of the fire company. Um, and I'll read through a, a um, the, the end of the resolution, which will uh, give you some idea of what's involved here. So it's uh, now therefore be it resolved that Council of the Municipality of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, for the sole purpose of qualifying the interest payable on the 2021 bonds of the company, that's the fire company, for exclusion from gross income of the owners thereof, which is PNC Bank, for federal income tax purposes pertinent to Section 103 of the Code, meaning the Internal Revenue Code, does hereby approve the issuance of bonds or notes by the company in the maximum aggregate principal amount of $1,250,000 for the purpose of financing or refinancing the cost of the project. Uh, this is existing fi uh, financing the fire company has on their, their building, so this is refinancing, that's what the project is for the existing building. Um, and that such bonds or notes shall be an obligation of the company, meaning the fire company again, and shall never be a debt of the municipality, and the municipality shall not be liable for any payment on such bonds or notes. Um, so that's the nature of this public hearing. Um, the floor is now open to anybody who may have a comment relative to um, this particular item. So anybody who would like to make a comment um, would come forward at this time. Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, and, and uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, we will be considering this resolution, council will, for a vote when we get into the resolution section of the agenda. Very good. Okay, right now we're going to open up for our citizens' uh, remarks and comments. So if anybody would like to address council, please do so. Mr. Serafini, did you sign in? Not as yet, sir. I don't think anybody has, no. <clears throat> I want to find out what you guys have done with Starbucks yet. If you would uh, state your name for the okay, record. Okay, my first. name is Robert Serafini. I am a resident of Monroe. <coughs> my question is, what's going on with the Starbucks?
Well, I'll, I'll take that uh, question, Bob. Um, it's in PennDOT's hand yes. right now, all right? And it is, as far as that's concerned, we have, we have had a, um, a, a different schematic of the driveway that, from uh, their engineering company, but that's all we've had. It's nothing official. So we really, I can't really say that there's anything official being done. It's, it's out of our hands. It's all in PennDOT's hand with respect to the highway occupancy permit, which is a driveway permit. And we have received a schematic where the driveway may change, but we haven't received anything um, officially. Okay. My question again, how can the council vote on something they don't, they don't have all the stuff in yet? I mean, when you guys voted five to one on this matter, and you didn't have all the particulars, I don't know how you could pass a, mo a motion like that. Can you explain that for me, Mr. Ratcher? Well, it's customary on developments. It happens really all the time that developments are either voted on yay or nay, subject to the approval of other bodies. In this case, that's PennDOT. Any development that's voted on up here that's on a public highway, a state highway, PennDOT has the ultimate ability to say yes or no with respect to the, the highway occupancy permit because it's it's their, um, it's their you know, it, it's it's their road. So what I'm saying is how can you vote on something without all the information in front of you? The information that had to go to PennDOT is theirs to review. It's not, it doesn't matter what the municipality thinks of that driveway. It matters what PennDOT thinks. They're the ones that issue the, uh, the highway occupancy permit. Has anything been done I've heard so many different things about the property over there. Like they're going to come in behind the car wash, they're going to move the car wash. Is there anything pertaining to moving the driveway? Is there, has there been anything done like that? I, I, I don't personally know what the latest schematic of the driveway is. Well, again, it, it, it was it a, depend on. Yeah, there, there was a hand drawn. That's why I'm saying it's nothing official, Bob. It was just a hand drawn schematic that apparently it may, and like I said, it's nothing official with a driveway to be moved up closer to McDonald's, and then there would be an exit driveway, a, a, just a, a right out only. But there's nothing official. We don't know what they're doing with the car wash. We don't know if they're purchasing the property of the car wash. We, we don't have any, we, don't, we have not received anything officially on that. See, that's what I'm saying, you guys. You, got, for it. You, you don't have all the, well, Everything down did black we and not, white. I'm no. sorry. Did we not? You interrupted have to, me a minute, did, did, please. I think we had to approve no. it for PennDOT to. Can I say something? I was talking and she interrupted me. I apologize. I was uh, trying to Greg. answer your question. Yeah, let's, I hadn't done. I had another uh, question here while I was talking to him. Bob, put it up this way. Any questions that you have? Thank you. That's what I was doing, sir. You're good. <laughs> okay. My question is, how can you vote on anything when you don't have all the particulars? I mean, we're here. All these other things that are talking about moving the driveway, they're talking about moving different things in there. I don't see how you could possibly vote on a five to one basis when you don't have all the information. I know you said it's contingent upon their, their survey, but the survey is, should have been done before you even brought it to vote. But all these other things have come in up too. And they're talking about moving this, moving that. Does that mean after, if they try to decide that, you have to vote again? No. The municipality has no say in what PennDOT approves for access Correct. onto their road. That's, that's what the issue is, really. Well, I see you did one thing there. You moved the sign coming on down from Old Haymaker Road. It says right turn only now. Oh, okay, yeah. Or it said, oh, you're, right. No, you're right, you're right. It said no left turn before. Second. I haven't been up that way for a while. But I'm, or, I'm just saying, was it, just I, was just it boggles my mind as to how you can vote on something and don't have all the particulars. I, I it just. I'm not sure, Bob, we can explain it any better than Mr. Ratcher did. I mean, yeah. Again, we really don't have any. I mean, it's like put the cart before the horse, you know what I mean? It appears that way, but it's not. That's all I have to say. I think it's wrong. Well, thank you, Bob. Once again, the floor is open for anybody who'd like to address council. This is your turn to do so on any agenda item that 
or any item that you'd like to bring up. Seeing none, we'll close that proportion of the meeting. We'll move over to our regular council meeting. And council conducted an executive session before tonight's council meeting on Tuesday, June 8, 2021, from 6.30 to 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation region, uh, reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at tonight's council meeting. Once again, I'll open it up for public comment on the proposed agenda items only. Seeing none, we'll move on to our agenda. Council, uh, I hope you had a chance to review the minutes for the Citizens Night meeting of May 11th, 2021, and the regular council meeting of May 11th, 2021. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion to approve. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Okay, moving over our ports of our tax collections. Once again, seeking a motion on the floor. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. And moving on to our list of bills and budget transfers. Linda, do you have anything for us? No, sir. Thank you. Eric? No, sir. Ron? Nothing. And Bob? No. Motion on the floor. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. And going over our payroll report, once again, motion on the floor. Motion, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. And we'll move over to our vacancies on boards, commissions, and authorities. And Linda, do you have anything for us this evening? Uh, yes, I'd like to make a nomination for Mark Swadniak for the Minerva Municipal Authority. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? M opposed. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? No. Motion passes. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I have. Thank you. Eric? Uh, yes, I believe I do. On the uh, Planning Commission for uh, Mr. Bruce Walker. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? That's Aye. for an Aye. appointment, right? For an yes. Appointment. Yes, that's appointment. He was nominated last month right. and he appointed now, right? Got that. Did Opposed? Ayes have it. Anything else, Eric? Um, human needs. Yeah, human, I was going to human needs. Mr. Uh, Michael Perry uh, for the Human Needs and Resource Advisory Board. Is there a second? Second. I, I didn't hear. Uh, our, I'm sorry, Ron. I, I, I wasn't close to the mic. I apologize. Uh, Human Needs and Resource Advisory Board, uh, Michael Perry. Uh, oh, okay. We nominated last month, and this is for appointment. And is there a second? I didn't catch. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Anything else, Eric? One second, Ron. please. Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, while you're uh, while you're waiting a minute here, <coughs> it does not appear that Mr. Walker has been nominated. The asterisk next to his name indicates applicant was not nominated, and there, there's no notation next to it that he was nominated. So that I do not believe he's nominated. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, Bruce Walker? Sure, I did. Yeah, I yeah, thought I nominated he did. 511. Yeah. It's not on my sheet either. It, 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 this Boy. says the opposite. Planning Commission. Uh, we're talking Planning Commission. You're talking about Planning Commission. I'm sorry. I'm looking. Rep, uh, I'm looking at the Recreation Board. Right. I apologize. Paying attention. Yeah. To okay. You, Bob. <laughs> All right. Well, this is one. Just follow me. I'll mislead. You. <laughs> okay. Eric, anything else? No, sir. Ron. Any? Uh, yes. Um, one second. Take your time. Lost my place. Finance Authority, I think. Finance Authority. Yes. Uh, Andrew Kennedy of Raspberry Drive for the uh, Minerva Finance Authority. Is there a he's second? Been uh, he's been nominated. This uh, yeah. appointment. appointment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Ayes have it. Anything else, Mayor Ron? Nothing. Bob? Uh, yeah, a couple things here. Uh, number one, uh, council set a precedent for any council member 
to make a nomination to any council person's ward, which is wrong. Uh, the Home Rule Charter, back to the Monroeville Bible. Uh, last month I read a vacancy on a board commission or authority shall be subject of social media notice in the municipality, which has been done, 25 days. Part B, nominations shall be made at a council business meeting at the time of the nomination each nominating official shall publicly present to council a resume and nominees of qualifications. And I have no resume here. Nobody presented Mark. But, but I am uh, presenting James Rosapel, and we do have his resume in our packet, and I'll read part of it. Uh, Jim says he's a lifetime member of Monroeville, involved in the community, uh, would have to resign from his position on Monroeville's zoning board, which he would agree to uh, 28, 28 years service in the police department. Uh, Democratic committee person for over 20 years. Uh, member of the Monroeville Zoning Hearing Board to present. Uh, chairman uh, for part of that. And I, I think he's well qualified. And what this is, is, is I believe it's a political payback because of my non-support. Uh, for some other uh, uh, council members. Uh, but, but I contend that that nomination should go null and void according to the Home Rule Charter, and I would uh, nominate uh, uh, Jim Rosapel in municipal authority to fulfill the last two years. Mr. Ratcher, just see for a second. I'm sorry? Just look for a second then on his nomination. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, second on, there is no second on his uh, nomination on Mr. Rosenbaum. Seeing none, motion dies. Well, it did die, but I still say it's illegal to nominate somebody without the resume being presented to council. So that nomination should be null and void. Duly noted, Mr. Williams. When, when you make a decision on that instead of going forward. Mr. Ratcher. I believe that what council has customarily done is the resumes are provided to the manager's office. And I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know whether those resumes are included in the packets or not. I don't know if you get those in your packets uh, or well, what well, happens there. Tim, maybe you could. Yeah, I can. Um, yeah. You know, through the years, um, the Home Rule Charter does say that, Mr. Williams. You are correct as far as a resume. Um, and some people submit a resume. Some people submit a letter. And, and this has been discussed back and forth going back year, going back even 10 years ago in, in, in my time here. And even at a public meeting here, council members have said, well, that letter's fine, that's okay. You know, he, had, he or she has expressed an interest. And then I've asked people to submit a resume and they just submit a letter and council's okay with that. So that has morphed into, into that. Now if council, wants to take a stand here one way or the other, well, the resume doesn't make any difference or according to the Home Rule Charter, that's at the pleasure of, of this council right now on how they want to handle that. But do I get a resume for every um, candidate for a board or a committee? No. No, no I don't. Okay. Anything well, else for us? Well, I just think uh, uh, Part B should be uh, considered. It says made at a business meeting, which this is, not the manager's office or somewhere else. And uh, what, what, whatever it is, I'm going to get on with life when I leave here. You know, <laughs> and, uh, but, but uh, this political Mayor, just sir. has to stop. Yeah, Pete, are you done, Bob? Yes. <clears throat> My only comment on what Mr. Williams is bringing up is, is that uh, I know he has nominated some people for boards and commissions that we didn't worry about resumes. I have nominated some people for boards and commissions that we didn't worry about resumes. Yeah. If I, we're going to start the practice of about resumes, then let's do it uh, yeah, council-wide. If agree we're not, that. don't worry about it. My point is, is that we can't do it for one person and then not worry about it for another person. So I think it's a, it's a councilmatic decision that they should, uh, we should let Mr. Little know what we want him to do. And if, uh, if we want to see resumes, then we should see resumes for everybody. Agreed. Well, I'm going to give you my spin if I can, Council. Mm -hmm. 
why, if somebody didn't put a resume in, but they're still willing to volunteer their time, why are we going to even make it even harder for anybody? That's just my spin. And I agree, I put people on that did not have resumes as well, so. We all do. We all have. We everybody. All have, yeah. So, again, I don't want to discourage any resident that's willing to step on any board. So, I mean, it's just food for thought for everybody. Please. Thank you. I think after the meeting or during the next period of time or before the next meeting that the council should contact Mr. Little and tell him what our pleasure is so he knows what to do. That sounds fair. Everybody good with that? Yes. I am. You good with no, that, I'm not good with that. We're, we're, we're looking at the home rule charter here. Yeah, but Bob, this president has been set with by you, all of us, all of us. It's time to change it tonight and adhere to this document. And if you do it, fine. If you don't do it, then, like I said, when I leave council, I'm going to get on with life. Yep. But again, I don't want to discourage any resident volunteering their time. If they didn't put a resume together and the person has the qualifications, who cares? I don't really think that's – I understand what you're saying on a home rule charter, but we've broken that rule years We've broken ago. lots of rules for years. And there may be some truth to that. But again, it's at the pleasure of counsel. Well, we just got to abide by the legal decision and go with our uh, solicitor. And uh, well, again, Bob, I think what Mr. Harvey brought up is is that let Tim know our thoughts, and then we can discuss it openly at the next July meeting. Our, our thoughts are right here. No, I hear what you again. Your do, your comments are duly noted. Anything else for us, Mr. Williams? No, nothing else. All right. All right, we'll move over to our bids and proposals. Tim, if you would. Okay, we have one bid which was um, explained to council uh, last uh, month, and this is for the library entrance improvements. This is a, uh, a grant, <coughs> a $200,000 grant through the Westmoreland uh, County Conservation District. And we had a bid opening, I believe it was uh, last Tuesday. And Mr. Hugus has given us a list of the bidders. And the lowest bidder is uh, Silvis, Silvis Group Incorporated out of Sarver, PA. Uh, we have a base bid of $132,349.74. And we have an at alt bid of $14,784, which is a total of two. 205-926.33. Now, during the uh, bid, Nicole Henline, the director of the library, um, she mentioned about that the library group would uh, take over on the uh, alt uh, bid with respect to um, finances. And uh, what it, the, on the alt bid, that was on a curb, right, Paul? It was concrete work. Concrete work. Yes. Okay, I thought it was just curb. Okay. Additional concrete. Additional curbs. concrete work. And um, so... You want to add anything, Paul? No, other than there's a numerical error that I put in a memorandum for the base bid. It's actually, it's, it says 132.349. It's 191.142.33. Yeah, I was going to say it. Yeah, I looked at that today. I'm going to always say it's, it's what, my, master's, my master spreadsheet has it correct, but in this. What's the wrong. correct number? 191. 191.142.33. I was going to... So the, the, the total bid is correct. Yeah, the total was correct. When correct. I read the 132, I didn't, yes. you know, I didn't read it this afternoon, but when I just read it now, I thought something was amiss there. So just for the record, Sharon, it's $191,142.33 for the base bid. And the ad alt bid is 14784 which the library says they will pick up that cost because that was an... We could either well we could throw we could throw away the whole bid if we wanted to but that part of it we could have taken out if we wanted to. The library says they'll pick up that cost. They're paying the 191. Not the 14,000. They're not paying the one. Who's paying the 191? The grant. The grant pays. The grant the pays base, the 191. The grant pays the base bid. Yeah. Okay, the and then the library is willing to we'll pitch in out account. of their own funds the Correct. other almost 15,000 to finish the project off mm -hmm. the way they want it. That's yep. correct. Perfect. Any other questions, Council, for Mr. Hughes? Thank you, Paul. No Thanks, problem. Paul. All right. Thank you. Long, long awaited work. Yes, <clears throat> much needed. Long awaited work. So yes. we have a motion on the table here. Yes. Motion to approve. I'll second. Questions or comments? 
Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. If I can make a comment, sure. Deputy Mayor, um, I don't know if anyone knows the Chops Amazon, but you actually can um, designate money to go to the Friends of the Mineral Library from the Amazon Smile. So if you have an Amazon account and you order from there, please pick the library because they will get some extra funds. Um, goodness knows my house has helped that cause along a lot. I have no <laughs> doubt. <man. laughs> if anybody, anybody else Everybody's wants to, Amazon. if you're gonna if you're gonna order anyway, you might as well help somebody out with it while you're at it. I was, so, I was, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Maintaining. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll move over to our consent agenda and new business. 23 dash 21 rather dash 3 dash st ar building company inc old william penn apartments please sign in and state your name for the record tim if you'd read that into the record sure uh we have uh actually three of these are all the same and i'll read all three of these if uh, you would okay um first one is applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct a four-story 121,000. 854 square foot apartment building consisting of 116 units and associated site amenities. Property is approximately eight acres and located at 4281 Old William Penn Highway, tax parcel 742-P-90, 742-R-345, and 742-P-74 in the R5 multifamily residential zoning district. Item number two, I won't read the uh, all the... Uh, Parcel now, applicants yeah. requesting preliminary and final subdivision approval to consolidate the parcels, the aforementioned parcels, and they are eight acres as previously mentioned. Item number three is a conditional use approval pursuant to section 401.8 of the Monroeville Zoning Ordinance as amended to permit a cut and fill operation totaling 34,781 cubic yards of earth in the property uh, has been mentioned where it is. That would be a public hearing. Um, so this would be a public hearing, opening Correct. up for a public hearing on the earth moving portion of it only. Mr. Ratcher. Um, it would be my recommendation that you have the applicant discuss all three applications at the same time. The, you know, the only thing we need a public hearing for is moving in the dirt, but in reality, the easy way for them to do it is to present their presentation of what's the whole building. Deal. Yes. And you know, we can pick out of that what we need. So. Is there anybody else going to add any testimony? Uh, well, I have two other people here. If, if anybody else, something. please uh, raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. You swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I did. Proceed, sir. Okay. Please state your name for the record. My name is Jeff Campbell. I'm an architect with Rothschild Doino Collaborative. We're an architecture and urban design firm in the Strip District in, in the city. Um, I'm here on behalf of AR Building. First of all, I just wanted to thank you guys for, <laughs> for doing this in person. Uh, you know, that's something we do this a lot, and this is, you know, one of the first times that we actually get to appear before council in person. We like it in so person, too. It, it's, yes. it's nice, so it's uh, really appreciate it. Um, I have a short presentation. I'll go through it pretty quickly, but I'm happy to go back and answer questions. But just in the interest of time, I'll go through it relatively quickly. I'm also joined by Mr. Jason Cambitsis on behalf of AR Building. He's uh, a, a senior vice president there. And then uh, Ray Gusty, who's from Farringer McCarty Gray, uh, who's the civil engineer. So, so we've been here before. Um, you know, hopefully a familiar face. AR Building Company. Uh, while they work throughout the country, they're they are based in the Pittsburgh region, and we're doing two projects currently in um, in Monroeville. Uh, so here we just have a few examples of kind of the work that they do. But really, the the best examples. You know, this is stuff that's up in uh, Rhode Island right now, in Connecticut. Just a, an example of, of who, who they are. Um, but really, I just wanted to jump to this because this is probably the, the best examples because you can go drive and see them. Mm -hmm. um, first is Evergreen Apartments, uh, which is you know, located just across the way here from where we're looking at. Uh, and the second one is Fox Plan Road Apartments, which are just now under construction. Uh, the images in the lower right are from last month. We actually started the foundation there nice. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, happy to go into those as well. You know, AR Building is a... Uh, not just a developer, but they're the owner, they're the builder of all these projects. Um, I've been working with AR for 17 years now, and you know all the new construction I've done, they still own all of it. So this is something that they're always you know, very dedicated. This is not a project that they're gonna come in and sell. They're definitely in it for the long haul. When they look at things, they wanna make sure things are built for the long haul as well, and make sure they're of high quality. 
So I think you'll find that with the two current buildings, and I hope you'll find that with this one as well. Uh, so this project in particular is, uh, we've been calling it, it's on Duff. It's at the intersection of Duff and Old William Penn. Um, Evergreen here is actually on the top of the page to the north of the highway. And then uh, Ever, um, Duff, or, sorry, Old William Penn is just on the south side of it. Uh, so it's, they're both there. They're actually not going to be that visible at the same time. Uh, right now Evergreen is really visible as you leave the city and come, in, and come into Moreauville. Um, Old William Penn will actually be visible in the other direction, so as you come the other way. So they do have a very different orientation to the, to the highway, which is a pretty visible, visible area. Um, and we'll be relatively, because of the, the slopes and the, uh, the foresting, we'll be relatively um, invisible from everything down below as well. Uh, so you can kind of see that overall site. Uh, this is a site plan done by FMG. It kind of gives you a sense of what we're looking at here. Right now, the only, only way you can access the site is from the entry road on the left. So there's, everything else is completely uh, either surrounded by other properties or surrounded by the highway itself. So we only so have one point. Out on? So that comes out onto Old William Penn. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the, um, the overpass is actually just That's off the page in the upper left-hand corner, and then it uh, connects into Evergreen Road, or Evergreen Drive, excuse me. Uh, so you can see what we've done is we've basically come up to the buildable area on the site. Uh, we've tried to buffer the highway with a parking lot, uh, trying to give it a little more space between the highway. Uh, and then, you know, really tried to decite that so it's got some, there's some beautiful views to the south, uh, some beautiful light as well. So we really wanted to make sure we were capturing that as much as possible. Uh, the building itself is uh, multifamily apartments. They are a range of studios, ones and twos. Uh, jump back here for a second. Uh, studios and ones and twos that are mixed up. It's a... Uh, Technically, a four-story building. There is one part of it that's a five-story building, just to kind of work with the work with the grade. But by code, it's a four-story building. Um, and I, I'd say by zoning, we're allowed to do a hundred-foot building here. But, that's um, correct. Right, yeah, we're just doing a sixty-two-foot. Um, <coughs> and to that end, you know, we do have all the zoning requirements here. We meet all the zoning. Uh, but again, happy to revisit that if any of that's in question. Uh, this is a, a uh, rendering we did that, you know, I always like to say this rendering is done with the construction documents. So, you know, our modeling uh, stuff now is actually so sophisticated you can just hit the magic button and it renders it and then we drop that in with a drone image. So we can say very confidently that this is what it will look like because these are the exact materials that we're specifying to the construction crews. Uh, it's made to look, it's very similar to to Duff Road, or excuse me, to Evergreen, Evergreen. right across that, the way. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just saw it the other day, so mm -hmm. I wanted to know if they were going to look yeah, like Yeah, they're, they're made to, they won't be identical because they are oriented yeah, you know very differently, yeah. but it's meant to tie kind in. Kind of, yeah. okay. Um, a similar feel. Very similar feel, yes. Okay. And, and again, brick. lots of brick. No, um, we do, they do like the nice clean white vinyl, there's trim, you know, no exposed wood, just to, yeah, to give it a high, um, High durability throughout the throughout time, and it cleans up very well. And again, this is something they want to look as good in 20 right. years as it does today. So do we. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple other things just to point out: uh, every unit has a porch. I, you know, it's a really nice amenity. People get that the ability to step outside. Um, we like to feature lots of lights. So we have big windows, uh, you know, lots of exposure for the units. Each unit has walk-in closets. Uh, there's for every bedroom, we have a bathroom, so a two-bedroom unit has two bathrooms, uh, integral laundry. Uh, these are all things that have resonated very well, and I know have resonated well across the street as well. Uh, and then I'll just go quickly through some of the floor plans. Here you can see, working with that grade uh, off to the, the left hand, the west end of the site, we are stepping down a little bit, and so there are some units down in there. Uh, when you get to the, to the main floor, uh, that does bridge the entire distance, and there is a nice, healthy common space in between. So right at the entry of the building in the upper right-hand corner, you know, we've got uh, a commons, a small cafe, a uh, fitness area as well that all kind of looks out over a pool that would be right in the, uh, in the site plan. You can kind of see that pool inside that nook. So it's a little okay, private, you know, away from, the, away from the highway and also kind of in the woods there. Um, so, you know, there are 43 studios in this, 41 bedrooms and 33 two bedrooms, so 116 units overall. Uh, an on-sales office as well, a uh, large package room. These are all amenities that AIR has done in the past and been very, very successful with. Uh, and then you can, again, just kind of moving up the building, there's more units there. And then here's just a, you know, I think the rendering probably tells the story a little bit better, but just some, some examples of exactly what those uh, elevations will look like in all directions. So 
So I'll stop at that. Um, again, you know, if there's civil questions raised here, he's happy to answer things. Counsel, any questions I, for I the do applicant? I have one quick question. I, I believe you said before the entrance, you said Evergreen. Don't, don't you mean Old William Penn? Is the entrance? Uh, yes, I, sorry. Okay, I, just I, for a split second, I want anyone yes. to be confused with the somehow it had a relationship to Evergreen and Crossway, but it's Old William Penn just prior to the, the Parkway's uh, overpass. Correct, yes. Thanks for catching that. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I have a question. Maybe Jason can answer. I mean, how's the sales going on the one on Evergreen? Yeah, good one for Jason. Or, uh, sales, rentals. Uh, yeah. it's, no, they're, not, they're rentals, I should say, not sales, <laughs> rentals. Hello, Jason Cambitsis AR Building, K A M. B-I-T-S-I-S. Um, I could say as of yesterday, I think we first started touring people and I think we had seven tours and six leases signed. So that's pretty good. That's good odds. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. How many, um, units, we're, we're how many units are in the first one? 92 units. 92. So this one's going to be a little bit larger. A what little is bit larger. this, 116? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have a waiting list of almost 300 people. Uh, I've gotten quite a few calls to, you know, who do, who do we reach out to? You yeah. know, so just seeing the property going up has yeah. sparked people. Yeah, so we're, we're targeting July 15th as the open, open date. We're hoping to be done by the end of this month. We would have been done, you know, maybe a little bit sooner. Uh, we got kind of hit up with the um, all the bad weather to finish up the parking. It's funny, it's Fox planned we were doing the parking lot first here. We yeah. can do it in second, but nonetheless, yeah. we'll be ready. So. Very good, thank yeah. you. Thank you. But, but, Jason, what's a two-bedroom? you're permitted you. what's a two-bedroom running for it, it, it ranges I think it's probably 15 1600 for the two bedrooms okay. um, and it goes up from there we have some pretty beautiful units that oversee the parkway the top corner the fourth mm -hmm. floor so um, I don't have a leasing sheet on me I forget what they're going for but that's kind of where they're at right now okay are you moving Tim no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've I moved enough in my life I'm, <laughs> I don't have any plans for moving in, in the future that's for sure nor I Mr. Gusty, I thought you could hang on. Mr. Williams had a question. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I have a question now. Uh, you got to cross a creek to get to this property. Uh, what are you doing with that entrance? Are you going to replace that uh, uh, bridge or yes. structure? Yes, we're replacing that existing culvert with a, with a new culvert. We actually have the, uh, the joint permit from DEP. Okay, and what will that be? Tin whistle pipe in there, or what kind of pipe you putting in the creek? It's, it's a. Uh, Type two aluminized, aluminized box culvert. It'll sit on a concrete, mm -hmm. concrete base, and it's it's hard to. We had to widen it mm -hmm. in order to get two lanes for traffic. Okay. Other question is, uh, along Old Twenty Two, uh, you got plans for a sidewalk along Old Twenty Two in your in front of your property? Yes, well, that was a comment from Mr. World, and we we added the sidewalk along the front. It's Okay, and the other comment is uh, you're going to move 34, almost 35,000 cubic feet of earth. Uh, what are you doing to stabilize that slope? Is, is, it, re is it call for anything, or is it just? Uh, it, it's con it's a controlled, it's an engineered field. There'll, there'll be a, a geotechnical engineer on site monitor, monitoring and checking all the, uh, the the compaction and everything during the construction. And, and we'll have a report for that. I believe we are required to, to issue those uh, reports to Monroeville, yes. Do we have that now? Not yet. Well, you have the geotechnical report. That's been reviewed. I, I thought you were talking about the compaction tests. Well, I'm just talking, you know, you start cutting dirt, and of course you're responsible for other properties if you cut it and it caves in. So I would refer that to Mr. Wilden or Paul Yugas if uh, they've looked at that and uh, satisfied with uh, what you're doing there. It's been reviewed by your geotechnical consultant. Okay. And, and any, all, their, all of their concerns mm -hmm. have been addressed. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Council? Yes, sir. I just wanted to have Mr. Gusty just show us the uh, Council the site plan and give them a little walk around and talk about the dirt, which you've already done, so. And it's pretty much the, the drawing that, uh, that Jeff had. So the Parkway East is up along the top of the drawing. Old William Penn Highway is over to the left here. Party Savvy Building sits down here. It gives you an idea where the site is. Um, we, we're proposing a buffer along uh, between the parking and the Parkway East. Um, as far as stormwater goes, uh, this parking and the front half of the building is, is directed to this detention basin here. 
Uh, we have another ground detention system here to collect this runoff from this part of the park, park parking. Um, we have a bioretention area back here to get this wing and part of this back area here. And then this back half of the building is piped down into the infiltration basin. So we have different areas for, de for stormwater detention. Is there fire protection in these apartments? There is. Uh, okay. Some okay. NFPA 13 I thought so. 13R. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, you had a question. I just, everybody knows what's coming. I do. <laughs> on the on the main drive there, is, is there a fire line against the curb? Well, if you put that access is, back up. Yeah, accesses are up around. I mean, there is access around and up and, and back around. Well, what I'm saying is it's against the curb that would be against the building. Is there a fire line there, or we have to hope that nobody's parked her? There, uh... No, there's no fire lane. So there would just be no parking signs, a fire lane. I don't know. How are you going to make sure that's open if an emergency occurs? Uh, You're not. I'm not sure. <laughs> what did we? What did you do with the other one? It was approved by your by the uh, Paul's fire marshal. Paul, so. Mr. Hugus is coming up. Paul, if you would. Absolutely, Paul Hugus. Uh, so there is parking on both sides of the access road run. So you have the main access road through here and through here, but there's access points through, dedicated access point to the main entrance of the building and on each end. Uh, but as far as there is parking against the sidewalk nearest the building. How far away is the entrance drive from the, from the building? Well, the typical, Parking spots nine by eighteen. So if you pull your apparatus here, you're about eighteen feet from the curb. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you don't want to be that close to the building anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, with your apparatus, but there is dedicated alleyways that come out of the access points of the structure to the parking lot. So if you have to get in with either either the EMS or fire department, you have those points of entry. And they provided the turning template for here um, for fire department access also. And it's a fully sprinkled building. The fire hydrants and fire department connections are located remotely here. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I wondered. Now we did have some internal discussion about the access road coming up through here. Um, you know, I guess we'll have to, you know, kind of look at it kind of like Cedar Ridge Drive, getting back to Cedar Ridge. You know, usually we don't have much of a problem. I mean, but if need be, we could establish that as a fire lane up to that point. Uh, no, okay, no, no. Okay. And, and again, it's a fully it's a fully sprinkled building, which you know changes a lot. Eric, of you want to ask the elevator question or me? I, I was gonna. It, 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 we I asked it for Evergreen before, so I might as well ask. Well. Well. <laughs> so, well, well, so we were sure the elevators. We've taken a look at the size for them for the access for the EMS stretchers as well. Correct. That's yeah. correct. That's after, right. After Three, three times, I think we got it right. <laughs> it's just my it was my turn. That's all. That's just that ask. We, we could take you to a couple places in Monroe that you it would just be doesn't. We have to stand people on most stop. Yeah. That's from you must be, yeah. can't even get their costs from. Yeah. So. You know. like, that, that we like up, to make sure these safety things. That came up with Evergreen, and it did. Uh, I know Jeff has addressed that uh, right. each, each one. Yeah. So. Like I said, we all get a giggle out of it, but I'm we have to ask very serious time to make sure we keep keep. Especially on a multi-story building, they they have a very difficult time mm -hmm. if they can't put their stuff in the elevator. Right. You know. Yeah. And you don't have to to come to the larger elevator that you did before. You understand that. Before too. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Council? No, sir. Mr. Uh, Williams, it, anything for uh, for no, the No, nothing further. Uh, you know, and just. Uh, a wild estimate. This is an opinion. You, I'm not holding you to anything for it, too. But it appears to me from the retention plan that you have in here for the for the water and the survey, you actually do you think it would lessen the the flow into that creek? It's down onto no, along old 22. Yes. Improve. Act so we're actually we're doing an improvement then. Well, you, your stormwater ordinance requires a 70 percent release rate. So, mm -hmm. so we we are actually that's based on <coughs> the, the existing conditions. So mm -hmm. we're hold, so. We're holding back more water than what's going off now. So, we'll start so that through. is that is an improvement. Yes. Yeah, that's that's we've had different problems along that that portion of, mm -hmm. of the of the creek bed for the for along old twenty two. So it'll be an improvement in the water, yes. the stormwater runoff. 
instead of 100 percent release rate, it, it's 70 percent. So right. we have to detain. We have to detain more. Mm -hmm. so. Anything else, Council, for no. these gentlemen? Good point. So anybody in the audience would like to come up and address these fine gentlemen on this project? Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Skaters? Aye. We did it. For what? Well, we did it. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Mr. Mayor, can I make a motion to approve item one, two, and three? Please. Motion to approve item one, two, and three. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> I'll Questions second one, comment. two, and three. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you. Good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck with your project. Have thank fun. So you're we look forward one. to it. I'm not moving in. <laughs> Don't never say never. never. Not, yeah, that's true. Not yet. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks, Gerald, never say never. In. Okay, Council, let's move on for our motions. And Mr. Little, if you would. Okay, we have several motions here this evening. Uh, number one is a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to establish a no parking zone on Baseball Boulevard uh, for Council's benefit and the public. This is up at Community Park West where we have a lot of activity up there during the weekends and people are parking on the shoulder and we want to get them to park up in the vacant lot. Uh, so hence the reason for this motion. Mr. Mr. Hughes. Yes, I need to make a, a change to the name. It's Bohinsky Way. Bohinsky oh, Way. Oh, oh, that confused me. Yes. You're yeah, was, was, here. It was, it was named that before and then it was renamed into Bohinsky Way, Brown Drive, you know. Right. By she she confused me with that one, Paul. I, I, so this, uh, that would be Bohinsky Boulevard. Be authorized to advertise for that. Yeah, it's authorized. That is correct. I'll, I'll make a motion to, to advertise. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Little, if you move on to the second one. Okay, now a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to establish a no parking zone in the Hazelwood Drive cul de sac. Uh, we've had some complaints of cars are parking at the end of the cul de sac. Uh, Hazelwood's just down over here and then walking up to the Northern Pike Let's Apartments. Uh, any discussion or anything? No, let's go for a motion. a petition on that? Mr. Uh, Harvey, let's get a motion on the floor first, oh, okay. and then we'll go for comments. Is there a motion on the floor to advertise? Motion. Oh, second. Okay, questions or comments now? Okay. We have a petition requesting that from the residents? Uh, no, good question. No, we do not have a petition. We've had uh, a couple of uh, complaints, but I, I think that's a good point. Maybe we should have a Well, yeah, I was I, wondering I just don't who, think who we asked can do for this. It until okay, all right. We get the petition. I agree with Mr. Uh, Harper. Who asked for this? I have this. that lady's name. I, I have it. You have that lady's name? I have the emails you sent me. Okay, you want to withdraw your... I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. You made a motion. <laughs> no. okay. I'll, with, I'll withdraw the motion pending further information. Does that That's work? Good. Okay, so then I'll second that second. withdraw. Okay, wait I'll withdraw with my... I'll withdraw my... Second. Second. Anybody like to motion to table? I'll motion to table. Second, second. second on the table. All right. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Okay, good point, Mr. Harvey. Okay, number three is a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to establish a no parking zone on Cannon Gate uh, Drive. This, um, Mr. Hugus has uncovered, we have no parking zone, but we have no ordinance to support it, as he has done an audit. His staff has done an audit on that, so. So it's there. The sign's not correct. Right. I mean, the no candy ordinance. gates on our road resurfacing program. No ordinance, right. So right. when we go through, we canvass the whole area, looking at everything from trees to storm sores to signs, and what needs to be done. So you need an ordinance to accompany. So we need a, an ordinance to support the no parking. Motion to. to advertise. To advertise the ordinance. Second. 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 Roll call, Shannon, please. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Ms. Gators. Aye. Okay, number four is a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to establish a stop sign on Cathedral Drive at Young Drive. I think we, uh, Jared, I think we have a illustration of the, uh, is this the? Uh, uh, no, wrong that's one. A, that's wrong Miller. One. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry. 
Um, okay, this is uh, to advertise the stop sign on Cathedral Drive at Young Drive. No, that's that's a, is that that's not the same one. That's, that's a wrong. No, one. that's no. a different one. This Mr. Williams brought this up at the last month's meeting, wanting to establish a stop sign on Cathedral at Young because there is not one present. Is there one needed? That stop sign would be going north on Young Drive right. at the corner of uh, Cathedral Drive. It would be on Cathedral exiting on to Young. Well, I don't want to stop the cars on Cathedral. I want to stop the cars going on Young Drive towards the park. You want to, you want to stop the cars on Young yes. at Cathedral? Yes. Well, then we're going to have to do an engineering and traffic study to do that. Okay. So you're going to have to table that. Motion to I table. I thought you said you wanted it on Cathedral. No, not on Cathedral. Young. And you're probably not going to justify a stop sign on Young Drive. Well, let, you don't let, have the amount of vehicles or the site distance or accidents. Well, let's look at it and see what we can do. Okay. Linda had a motion to table. Is there a second? A second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, motion number five is a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance authorizing proper officials of Monroeville to enter in a collective bargaining agreement with the Public Works Bargaining Unit for the period January 2020 through December 2023. Uh, I mentioned to council in my monthly memo that uh, we hopefully will have all the uh, I's dotted and T's crossed uh, with this collective bargaining agreement. Uh, there was an arbitration uh, over this that's been settled, and hopefully uh, July, come July, we can have everything uh, completed, and we want to have the authorization to advertise it so it can be adopted at the July Council meeting. Lucy, just Any questions or discussions? No, sir. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, uh, next one is, is of the same order, only a motion authorizing and advertise an ordinance authorizing the proper officials of Monroe to enter a collective bargaining agreement with a refuse collection of the Department of Public Works for the period of January 2020 through December 2023, and the same concept applies. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Thank okay. You, Mr. Little resolution. Well, no, we have one other uh, motion that uh, we discussed in the executive session oh, about yeah. the administrative benefits ordinance number ordinance number twenty six thirty, a motion to amend the administrative benefit ordinance uh, to reflect that um, the retirees or the people who will retire would be able to purchase, um, um, let's say, ancillary. Um, benefits uh, that are not in their collective bargaining agreement if they're a union or if, or if they're not union administrative benefit ordinance uh, because municipal benefit service our broker on this suggested that we should do this uh, so um, it is in concert with uh, the practice is there a motion on the floor motion second please. questions or comments seeing none roll call Sharon please mrs. Gatos aye mr. Poach aye mr. Harvey aye Mr. Williams. Aye. Now we'll move the resolution. Well, no. Okay. The first, okay, the first one is uh, has been uh, tabled the last two or three months. It's a resolution authorizing distribution of grant funds for the Memorial Day Parade. Council it, has tabled this resolution at their May 11th meeting. If I may, um, that money is not going to be dispersed. There is not going to be a parade, so I don't know how we take it off or out. Um, we got to take it off the table. Yeah, yeah so we do, do that is that yeah, how we yeah, start yeah, yeah, yeah. by doing yeah, that, right. and then we can just put the money back? Is there into a motion the fund? to take this resolution? Motion to take it off. Second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Now, nah, Linda, you have the floor. Now, I'd like to make a motion to put the funds back into the general fund for well, next year. Well, that'd be or a motion to deny. What do I say? Deny the if you remove, if you remove it from the agenda. Uh huh. Essentially, you're doing the same thing. That happened. Yeah. Okay. So the We're motion good. should be to remove it from the agenda. I would like to make the motion to remove it from the agenda. Second, please. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. 
Mr. Little. Okay, uh, next is a resolution extending the temporary suspension of accessory outdoor dining regulations as set forth in ordinance number 1443 as amended and authorizing the zoning officer to issue temporary accessory outdoor dining permits to establish rules and regulations. Um, this is to rescind. I have a motion to approve. I may. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. We, uh, back at the beginning of the pandemic, um, Council adopted a resolution suspending the regulations that were in place. We've extended that one more time. The latest extension expires on June 30th. So the idea here is to extend it through the end of the year. That's correct. Things are starting to open back up, but it seemed that was the right thing to do. And then obviously when it expires at the end of the year, hopefully we'll be back to normal. There'll be no need to uh, adopt any further extensions. Motion on the floor. I already made the motion. All right, there's our second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, next one is the uh, resolution from the public hearing we had at the beginning of the meeting, a resolution approving the issuance of certain bonds or notes by Monroe Volunteer Fire Company number four. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion. motion. Is there a second? Ron made it. We both Ron. at the same time. Ron did, and then I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, last one is a resolution amending work hours for site plan application number 20-7-ST of Sheets Incorporated concerning property located at 3954 William Penn Highway. The resolution um, is for. Does that change the hours too? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just change the hours. I just. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to remember find what, what the hours, hours were. Yeah, 7 uh, p.m. to 7 a.m. So, motion to approve. Is there a second? second? Questions or comments? Seeing none. What's the normal hours? 7 to 7. 7 to 7 is what it's 7 to be. 7. No, if we didn't vote on this. If we didn't vote on it, it would be usually it would be seven it would be seven to seven anyway. I mean this is in the this is seven PM to seven AM. Yeah, this is seven. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Yeah. Misunderstood. Yeah. Just the other way. Yeah. yeah. We did have a second night. We got off. Okay, roll call Sharon, please. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Williams did, yeah. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Okay, we're going to re uh, go over our reports of our municipal staff and any words of wisdom, Bob? No uh, wisdom tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Tim, you yeah, have Yeah, uh, item number one is just an FYI for Council about the Tricog Land Bank proposed property acquisitions at 2455 Saunders Station Road and 409 <laughs> Fieldstone Drive. The uh, letter is in your packet from the uh, land bank, try called That's land bank. That's Just an fine. FYI to get that into the minutes. Any any discussions or anything yeah. about that? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, next one is, uh, as I mentioned in my monthly memo, um, is that, and Mr. Hugus and Mr. Wilden and I have discussed, we have had as, as witness tonight a lot of sign requests uh, in the municipality and a lot, even a lot of non-moving vehicle um, and they have their, obviously signs are, are good to alert people, but, you know, we discussed this with the staff and it's, we're just getting a lot of signs up there and I, we just want to make council aware of this to be, um, if you're going to approve a sign, um, we're getting a lot of sign and we're getting a lot of sign littering. Uh, in the community and I just wanted to make you aware of that you mean like um, the one stuck in the ground during political times no we're not talking we're talking about uh, not so much moving uh, moving vehicles is one thing but um, you know it's the no parking signs oh. it's um, you know we're just getting a lot of them out there and you brought up a good point in the same church but different pew a couple months ago mr. Harvey about the handicap uh, parking in in in, in I've yes. worked in other community where that became a rash of everybody wanted a handicap and those people that are handicapped and, and and they sincerely need it I'm not suggesting that you 
don't approve that. But, I mean, you can really impede, like you were talking about with the site plan here, about fire uh, vehicles and things like that. All I'm saying about the handicapped parking is, is we should have a set of specifications that either would allow them to have it or not. If they have their own driveway and it's wide enough, that should be usually. Well, that's a good point. I mean, that, that's a good point. Um, but, uh, Paul, do you want to add anything to that, or Paul Wilden, or? Uh, we're, we're, we discussed it a couple of weeks ago, and I said, well, I said, I'll bring it up under my report. Well, um, you know, one of the things you got to consider, too, you know, for every action, is an equal and opposite reaction. So you're going to put signage up. When you go out par, start plopping signs in people's front yards, they don't like it. <laughs> they're calling their elected officials. Mm -hmm. They're calling us. Get it out of my yard. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know. When you just pass the ordinance, that's where you put it. That's and, the petition. If their name's on the petition. Yeah. Right. You know, and Tim and I dealt with one on Heather Drive for months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, Mr. Wilson does that. You know, right. he, the, the individual there just, you know, was relentless. But she didn't want it in front of her house. But it was, you know, it, it was put in as per the standards. You know, right? so that's the downside of the signs. You know, then you got the regulatory signs versus the, the cautionary signs. You know, the regulatory signs you got to do it in a certain manner. The caution signs, um, you know, I don't necessarily know many people even look at them. Well, I like the new, the bright yellow, the bright color, the yeah. neon greenish yeah. color. I mean, at least it grabs your attention for a second. So, you know, but you watch, right. watch I children. You, I think what our staff is saying is, is that be, we need to be a little more studious in as to what where we ask for signs at. Is that a fair if statement? If the sign is red, it's regulatory. If it's not red, then you can't do anything about it. There you go. Thank Everybody you. good with that? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, one last thing that I don't have on the agenda here um, that council's aware of on, on Friday, uh, we had the uh, installation of the uh, rotary peace pole up at the community park. And uh, Jared, do you have any? There we go. Uh, we had some video taken of the peace pole, and we have a multitude of different languages of the peace pole being put in by our public uh, works department uh, of let peace prevail on earth. Well, they got the time uh, laps, and they got it plumbed up kind of. Uh, Mr. Hizzy did a good job of plumbing it up there, and that's a, that's a good video, Jared and Jake. It good is. job. Excellent <laughs> job. Looks good. Very good job. They're so, fast workers. Yeah, they're very fast workers. <laughs> <laughs> they're fast workers. You can work like that, right, Bob? <laughs> hey, for the money, I think they should get double paid. Very good. Good job, Jay <laughs> and Jared. Good job. And you can see the different languages. I think there's about 12 different languages on there, let peace prevail on earth. And uh, now we will have the dedication ceremony, I mentioned to council in my memo this month, is, was scheduled for June 26th, but we are trying to get a speaker that we thought we had, we could not get, because I'm a member of Rotary, and so we had to postpone it, but we are gonna have a dedication ceremony up there, and what we're actually trying to do is get people that speak all the different languages that's on the peace pool uh, up there to be uh, represented. And that, that's kind of a tall order, but we're trying to do that. Whether we'll be successful or not, I don't know. Um, so when the dedication is going to be up there, hopefully in July, I'll let, I'll let council know about that. And, and last but not least. That is uh, all I have No, you're recycling. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the recycling event. A uh, recycling event is for shredding which I believe uh, Representative Markozik is sponsoring on Saturday, yes. July 17th at 9, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And also an, another thing I did notice in the newspaper is that uh, former uh, Councilman Dave Cooker's mother passed away, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Vivian, and um, I, I noticed that. And uh, everybody remembers when Mr. Cooker was on council how he was, he was living and taking care of his mother and father. His mm -hmm. father passed away some years ago, but now his mother passed away. My condolences to uh, Mr. Cooker on that. And that concludes uh, my report. Okay, Mr. Estock, if you please come on up. And he's uh, our recreation sports coordinator. What did I do? Just a uh, couple things Tim asked me to bring up to you guys. The pavilion naming rights, we were uh, nice enough to find somebody to donate $5,000 for pavilion number two. I think Jared has the picture. So oh, nice. that's what it's, 
that's the, what it's going to look like. Terry and Lebo Memorial Pavilion. There's a gentleman that lives on Tilbrook Road. That's his wife to the left and a good friend of his to the uh, left and to the right. So that's not going to be the actual sign. Uh, talking to Paul and to Mike Strom, that's made out of a, a board that doesn't last as long. So they're actually redoing the sign. So once it gets done, it'll be put up in pavilion number two. I will receive the check. It goes to the Monroeville Foundation. Tim has it in his hand, mm -hmm. and it'll be Got deposited right through the my office. <laughs> okay, but it's in, it's in his possession. So hopefully, you know, we'll get that, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, very good. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Next. Very quickly, uh, unfortunately, the girl, who you guys are all aware of, CGI, um, if you guys have done the work in the past, and Tim, I apologize, she just texted me. She's still on another call. Okay. And I felt like maybe oh, we you can, can do it together. It. Well, <laughs> no, I need your help well, on this one here. Yeah. So CGI is a company that we've already done some work with with regards to the videos that are on the website um, that uh, all over the different places and stuff like that. So this company has approached Tim. Tim had me to look into it. We've attached this to your packet. I think Hopi's all read it. Um, it's not costing us anything to do. Uh, what we are going to gain out of this, once you're talking about signs and all that, we're going to gain 25 banners out of it for free. Jerry, uh, do you have any? You have an illustration? Did you get that to put that up nice. there? It's in the back of our packet. Right? Yeah, it's in. I thought maybe we could show. No, it. I didn't get that one. Oh, okay, this is. So you guys all had the packet, I, the, you know, right? The pictures and stuff. So it's an opportunity. That, again, they're going to reach out. I think what we would look for is some direction as to where you might want the banners. We've talked about possibly putting them on the boulevard. We talked about putting some in the park. Uh, it's just kind of what you want to do. You, where you're seeing a lot is like a Murraysville where you see the, the veterans being advertised on the banners and stuff like that. We want to do business. So it's kind of a, a nice opportunity. Um, they're clean looking. They will take all responsibility for all, everything comes with it. Um, they would actually reach out to our staff and pay, our, pay us to have them installed. So that really, there is no really cost to us whatsoever. There's no downside. It doesn't There's sound no like downside it. to it whatsoever. Council, um, what would you think if we would just allow our staff, so they're the ones that's out there every day, to pick the most appropriate place to hang these? I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, we're not odd like they are. I mean, I'm odd, but not like these folks are. I mean, you're just some, speaking of the, of the placement. Yes. Yeah, some different locations, whether it's on Center Road or some, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can deal with Paul and the, the staff and figure out. Park. I think the park yeah. can be some nice locations. Maybe we can put one by the wedding gazebo. So when people come in, they can see the wedding gazebo or to the amphitheater. There's just some different ways of doing it. How many and banners? How many banners? We get 25 free 25 for free. us to do what we want, but they're also going to be advertise for more banners wherever we want them. Okay, good place to put them on 22 on, on the uh, existing not, light standards. We're not, we're not yeah, allowed to put them on 22. I don't know if oh, we're allowed to put them on 22. That's too. That's, that's, that's what Penn Dot is. Why yeah. are you saying that? Because if you go through Murraysville, they did it. Yeah, so Murraysville yeah. got their approval. Yeah, yeah. yeah Murraysville so does that flag approval. opportunity where they post a flag every and they have a group of people who do that. So they do it for Flag Day, July 4th, Memorial Labor Day. Every flag had a picture of a different a veteran. Yeah, they do that in right. Park as well. well I thought that was a wonderful let's idea. Let's just go yeah. around the room. Linda, your thoughts on the placement. Should we have staff or do you want counsel? Well, I don't know what you mean by staff. Well, how about we come some ideas with Paul? Yeah, that's yeah, what I would department. like. I'm thinking like yeah. with you this. With well, our, yeah, yes. as long as you like Mr. Weld and Mr. Yudis, yes. um, you know. Yes. Yes. Well, that was I, mean, I think, yeah. I think it makes more sense. Right. Yeah, Find a I, I don't think Josie has a clue <laughs> in finance or Tina. In I wasn't IT. referring to Josie does. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, so I, I think, think we all cool. agree. With we'll let you guys know firsthand what our thoughts are before we do anything. Yeah, Eric, uh, um, as long as that's Ron? the case. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, that's great. Great. Okay. You have your mission. Tim, you don't have this, but I'm going to remind everybody that July 4th, the fireworks are on. Obviously, this July 4th, yeah. then we won't be meeting by then. Oh, he already has it up there. I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, so I want to remind everybody we are having July 4th I can wipe fireworks. That off my list. What's that? Did you have it? That's okay. okay. You talk about it. That's okay. So, um, one of the things that we are adding to this this year is we have our gentleman up at the amphitheater, his name is Dana Babel, and he's actually going to be there as like a DJ, and he's going to have that system from the library that allow people to listen to music. 
Um, what he's going to do is just talk and you know talk up the Monroeville and stuff like that. And while the fireworks are going off, he's going to play patriotic music and stuff. So people sitting by their cars will have some music to go with the fireworks. Will that come through their cars? Yes. yes. That will come yeah. through their car radios. come right through their that's car that's radios, and I think it'll be kind of cool feature. Yes. You know, so Very even nice. though we don't really have that pandemic thing, it's still going to be a nice little feature. Right. So. Right. Okay. Yes. Oh, I feel like the, Mon the Monroe driving is kind of cool. Huh? Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. Um, it, can I ask sure. what the status of the um, the swings, the handicap swings, the autistic swings, where we are with the installation on those? Have so we ordered? Our meeting last night, uh, he said everything's coming in. He hopes within two weeks to have all the, the swings and stuff in. Okay. Right? But they're all kind of piecemeal in, correct, Paul? Yeah, they're starting to filter in. Okay. Yeah. So he said hopefully within the next month he should have everything Okay, so in. when we have them done, we're going to have like before and after pictures to show yes. the people of yeah. where they're at and what we've done wanna, with that. We want to identify the location. Yes, yeah, sure. so that everybody knows know. and they can see what a wonderful thing that we've added Absolutely. to our parks. 110%. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, me Great. also. You may stay up One here. other thing before you forget or I, I forget, uh, Joanne Morris uh, in the Parks and Recreation Department gave Council and everybody a copy of the, our summer concert series will be starting mm -hmm. next Sunday. And the first band is going to be uh, Deja Vu 3. And also, as I've mentioned at uh, Council meetings here, is for three, uh, three uh, events, June 13th, July 11th, and I believe August, August 8th. 8th. Correct is that we're going to have a, um, a, a movie in the park after the concert. Mm -hmm. And this um, Sunday, uh, the 13th, is the first one, which is going to be sponsored by Comcast, is going to be The Crudes, A New Age. I've never heard of it. Well, that's a kid's it. movie. Yeah, yeah. So all that's a kid's movie. That's why you haven't heard of it, Tim. That's why we have it. It's a kid movie. Yeah, right? and I think our, our next... Seen it. <laughs> you have grandkids. <laughs> you have grandkids, you'll uh, see it. So we're going we're gonna to have that. Tim, thanks if you wouldn't have come up here, you would have had any of this before. No, not <laughs> This That's will a, all be on our website as well. Correct. Right. Yes. right. Uh, yeah. We were actually yeah. able to go out and find sponsorships for the first two, which is Comcast going to do the first one. Monroeville Rotary is going to do the second one. Lions Club. Monroeville Lions Club is going to do the Lions second Club. one. What's right. the second so, movie? Right. Uh, it's either Frozen 2 or Lion King. One do you know opposite. those ones, Tim? Have you heard of those ones? Yeah, I've Lion King, I've heard of Lion what King's the, new, the animated one, so I think it would be a good one. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to We have a blow-up screen. The system and everything will be down in the amphitheater. And everything will be piped into the amphitheater sound system. So, nice. yeah. So. We thank you, sir. All right. Good thank team. you. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All righty. Now uh, we'll move over to our public comments on any municipal item once again. Seeing none, we'll close that proportion of the meeting and we'll go to our reports of council. Bob, we're going to go to you first. Okay. Uh, Tim and I and a couple others went to the uh, AVETS uh, ribbon cutting today. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, there's nothing that I saw that I'd have to go back and say, well, you need to paint this, do this. It, it's just perfect. It, it's a nice facility, and I'm well pleased. They uh, did a nice job in the sidewalk in front, and uh, they just did everything right. Uh, the other thing is Monroeville Soccer Club won their tournament. My grandson is on that team. Hey. Good job, Sammy Yay. and friends. Very, very good. Anything else, Mr. That's Wood? all I have. Mr. Harvey. I just want to reiterate what he said about AVETS. What a fantastic facility over there. I couldn't believe how big it was. I mean, it's just... Uh, it looked big. It's incredible inside. So if you guys ever get a chance, you should take go over and take a look at it. Other than that, I have nothing. Mr. Poach. Uh, nothing else at this time. Mrs. Gato. Um, condolences to Dave Cooker on the loss of his mother. Um, I'm, I feel, I'm sorry for you. I know it's been a rough road. So, um, But I would like to um, talk about that yesterday approximately 20 police officers from Monroeville and Pickheron participated in the law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics. The group, aided by officers from the city of Pittsburgh, completed a three-mile leg run down Business Route 22. In all, over 430 officers from 35 police agencies will carry the Special Olympic torch over 150 miles from Pittsburgh to State College during a three-day span. So I would like to say thank you to all the officers, and I'm very proud and pleased to say that we took part in this, and I thank each and every one of our officers. Thank you. That is all I have. Oh, and happy 4th, everyone. Absolutely. 
obviously happy Father's fourth, Day. but uh, I would like to also Father's congratulate our Gateway class of 2021. They graduated today. But we hope. Well, <laughs> we, hope. <laughs> we hope. We hope. Yeah, I'll get to you. Good, Linda, you have one more. Idea. Yes. Um, happy Father's Day <laughs> to yeah. all of the gentlemen, my husband, my father. So we don't want to forget about our, uh, our guys, you, all our guys. You're good. Happy Father's Day, boys. Thank you. All righty, and uh, certainly um, condolences to Dave Cooker. Uh, I really enjoyed working with him up here, and it was a tough road for him because he did take care of both oh. of his parents, mm -hmm. and he's a good man. So condolences, Dave, and hopefully uh, things will get a little easier for you. And with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, and good night, everybody. Oh, Jeez, my God. Nice job.